Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back in today for another game review, and today we're excited to check out Blockout from Hallmark Games. This is for two to four players, ages eight to adults, it'll probably take about 20 to 30 minutes to play. And in Blockout, you are going to be laying down tiles which will have different colors on them, and you have to make connections to other tiles that have already been played that have those colors as well. If you're able to connect your tiles in super awesome ways that will match uh, either three or potentially four sides, then you'll score points, and whoever has the most points at the end of the game will be the winner, because that's how games work. It's light, it's simple, it's from Hallmark! Oddly enough, but is it good? Let's open it up and I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, we're gonna take a look at what you're getting inside of Blockout. So first and foremost, we have a handy dandy rule booklet. Uh, it is probably about seven, eight pages, double-sided, full color. It's got pictures, plenty of illustrations, examples, and figures. Very well done, should have you up and running in no time at all. I think I had one real question, and it was more of a minor question than anything. You know, I had to house rule it, but not a big deal. So overall, well done rule booklet. So in Blockout, you are gonna be placing these colored tiles. You're gonna have a whole big old bag of them. Uh, onto the board and the game will end once you have reached the finish line at which point everyone else aside from the person who finished the game will get one more turn to play three tiles now when you're playing tiles you are going to try and score points by playing tiles by matching three or four of the different sides what am i talking about let's go over the components then we'll get into the gameplay so first board wise right now i'm playing on the small side of the board there's also a larger side of the board that you can play it as well it has slightly different rules with these four spots in the middle uh but it does uh, make the game a little bit longer, which as I'll tell you in the cons and pros is not something that I particularly wanted to have happen But I did try it once and I'll tell you more about it later So the first person is gonna go and you're gonna draw five tiles from the bag like so you're always going to have five tiles at the beginning of your turn and what you're gonna do is you're gonna play three uh, up to three of these tiles out here and you have to just match the colors If I want to play here I would have to make sure that there's a black here and a red there so I could play Boom, that one right there. Now if I wanted to, and that matched two sides. If I wanted to um, do this one, I have to play a blue here and a red here, and I do. I happen to have uh, that, and then if I wanted to play here, I could just play a blue. So yeah, we'll just play a blue right there. And that would be the end of my turn. I would draw back up to five tiles, and I didn't score any points that round. So let's move on to the next round, though, and see if we can score some points. Now... All the tiles pretty much are going to look like this. They're just different colors, but there are also scattered in there some Joker tiles. And the Joker tiles can be used in any space, and they also can score you points, interestingly enough. So let's see. Let's re replace, say, this one with that and see if we can score ourselves some points so I can show you a little bit of how scoring works because it is very simple scoring. So we'll put yellow right there because that connects. Then we need a yellow blue. Do we have a yellow blue? We actually do. Perfect. And then for our third tile, we'll play the Joker right here. And the Joker is going to connect to all four sides. And if you can connect to all four sides, then you will score two points. If you only connect to three sides, so let's say I did this instead, and I scored, uh, I would score one point. So if you can connect all four of them, then you connect two points. If you can connect all three, you score one point. But also, with the scoring in this game works, so let's pretend that I did this first, I put the Joker here, I would score one point. The next time I scored this round, so right here, actually, no, that's a bad example. Never mind, it wouldn't work. But... In a different example, the second time you score in a round, those points are doubled, and if you can score all three times with all three tiles, you will score uh, three times the points. So let's cover that real quick. Normally you score one point if a piece you lay down connects to three matching colors. So right there, boom, boom, boom. If you can do it so it's connecting to four matching colors, you'll score two points. Uh, so the most you can ever score in a round, if you happen to get two points, two points, two points, would be two points for the first uh Two points for the first tile, four points for the second tile, and then six points for the third tile, bringing you up to a grand total of 12 points. It will never most likely happen to you, but it could, especially if you had a whole bunch of wilds and you got set up. Uh, but that's how the scoring works in the game. It's either going to be one point or two points or those numbers, but doubled or tripled. Very easy scoring system. Uh, and so my turn is over, and I draw three tiles. Now, the other interesting thing about the wilds is that once they are placed, they're not there forever. So let's say that someone happened to have a yellow, yellow, blue, yellow. Uh, we don't actually have one out of here to make this example work. But if we did, on our turn, what we could do is we could take the Joker, put it into our hand, and then replace it with the one that actually fits. That one doesn't fit, obviously. But if it did, let's pretend... 
then we could have that joker and then we could use that joker as a tile for us and score you know the regular points and also the other thing cool thing with the joker is joker scores your points as well anywho you're going to continue to do this until eventually someone connects to the finish line at which point the game will trigger its ending uh everyone else will get one more turn to lay down three tiles and score points and at the end of that whoever has the most points will be the winner of the game the only rule that i did not talk about is that when you lay a tile it has to connect to the start in some way, shape, or form. So right now, I could play here, 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 or here. It has to be able to connect to the start space. So I couldn't just be like, yeah, I'm just gonna throw this bad boy out here. Uh, but there you go. That, in a nutshell, is how you're gonna play Blockout. Alrighty then, Blockout from Hallmark Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side. Uh, game's not gonna be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. The first and foremost reason is that it's not a particularly fun game. It's pretty boring. I mean, that's the best way to put it. Uh, I played this three times in my class and I asked all the kids, I was like, would this be something you'd want to play again? And they're like, not really. And I, I can't disagree with them. It was pretty boring. We used uh, the large board one time just to see what the different tiles in the middle of that like spiced up the game or made it better. It didn't. It was just a slightly longer game and it was boring. And then we played the short games and they were just boring none of the choices you make are really that interesting most of the time it's pretty obvious what you should do and most of the time it's like uh i don't know how to explain it you have the tiles in front of you you can only do a certain number of things with those tiles so yes you can try and outsmart outwit outthink people set yourself up but most of the time you're not going to you're going to see if you can score one or two points on your turn by setting things up just perfectly for you and that's it just wasn't that much fun and that's another thing i crush the kids at this so if you're trying to play this with younger kids you are going to have to either help them or put kids gloves on you know and try and take it easy on them because it's just it's got some strategy I, i'm going to tell you that that it definitely does have some strategy on when and where you should play some things and and you know keeping your eyes open in case you can steal the jokers from off the board and little stuff like that but all in all like the sum of the parts just isn't that much fun and i didn't like it the kids didn't like it and i just have no desire to play it ever again any other cons um oh yeah i don't like the box i don't like the box insert it's really annoying they give you a bag to put the tiles in but if you actually put the tiles into the bag then you can't fit everything into the box and i would be willing to bet money that this box insert which is a nice or custom box insert was not designed for this game it has like slots for cards and whatnot i'm just assuming that the factory was just like hey this box insert fits inside the uh this, the box size you got you want it and they're like well it doesn't actually fit our game and in fact it actually hinders playing the game because you have to take the tiles out of the bag each and every time then put them back into the bag each and every time and it costs us extra money but yeah screw it let's get that box insert that's not the right size well, it is the right size, but it does it just doesn't work. It's, it's a nitpick. In the grand scheme of things, I'm telling you that the game itself is boring and it's not that much fun to play and the strategy is, yeah, here, you know, it's, it's yeah. But, but I'm going to focus on the box insert because the box insert is what really annoys me now that I think about it. But anywho, let's, wait, this is the, we're talking about the cons. All right, let's get on to the pros. The pros, it's, it's a game. It's serviceable. It's not broken. The rules are pretty well done. I mean, there's one, like, kind of thing where you're gonna have to house rule it which isn't mentioned in the rules and it does play both the short game and the long game which is nice so you know you're not just stuck playing the long game and the tiles are the tiles are nice components i mean they're nice thick sturdy tiles are a little bit sharp on the edges but they're not gonna peel like i'm trying to peel it right now it won't peel so component wise uh, decent components um this is a thick bag yeah, oh god, I, was, I, was, I should say the bag wasn't going to rip. Okay, so the bag will rip, um, but luckily bags are easily replaceable. And you don't even really need the bag. You could just grab them out of the box uh, if you really wanted to. But, uh, you know, I, I just... Uh, I don't have anything to say about this game. You know, the pros are the game is a game and it's... Like, this is the kind of game where it's like, why in the hell am I reviewing it? And then I remember that I made a promise to each and every one of you to review every single game I have, as odd or obscure, as unpopular, or as bad as it is, I will review it. So that way, Board Game Geek will have a review on it. 
And I'll be a champion for people who love watching odd reviews for some reason. I don't know. Let's block out from Hallmark Games. It's just, it's very, very forgettable, and it's not a very good game. I, I'm not going to say it's a bad game, because, you know, maybe it's just not a game for me, but I thought it was just a boring game, and something that I don't ever want to play again. So there you go. That is Blockout from Hallmark Games. Uh, if you want to get a Hallmark game, get Trap the Cap. I actually did like Trap the Cap. I thought that was pretty decent. This one, not so much. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below. If you want to support the channel, click on that Amazon Associates link down below. Buy anything on Amazon. It throws a couple of pennies my way. really does help support the channel. And in the comments below, let me know. Have you ever purchased something at Hallmark? Oh, that's a good question. Bonus points if you know if Hallmark is still open or not. Um, for me personally, have I ever purchased anything at Hallmark? We used to have one in my mall. We used to have a couple of them in town. I don't think I ever bought anything at Hallmark. It just wasn't really a store for me. So no, I've never bought anything at Hallmark. But have you bought anything at Hallmark? My wife used to work at Hallmark, actually. So we have a whole bunch of nice Christmas decorations for that reason. Uh, so she did. But for me personally, no. Never bought anything at Hallmark. The store just was not uh, aimed at me, personally. But let me know in the comments below. Hallmark. Yeah or nay. Everybody, thank you. As always, thanks for your time, YouTube.